Every kingdom has a king. Every house has a father. If his sons and daughters are anything to go by, if his princes and his princesses are anything to go by, then you are in for a treat because the king himself, the father, is in the house today. It is time for us to hear what the father has said. And it is time for us to hear what the son of the most high God has been inspired today to speak. We have missed him. I have missed him certainly. And I know that it is not, not, not in vain. The Lord has bestowed, him, has bestowed a mantle on him that no man can deny. I'm talking about a man that whips the devil just with a smile. I'm talking about a man that when he takes a step forward, every enemy retreats. I'm talking about Pastor Alf Lukau. Now, beloved, from our AMI studios in Europe, I'd like to present to you with the greatest honor the man that I call my father, the man that you call your father, the man we could not wait to hear, the man we could not wait to see, the man whose feet we love, the man whose hands we are blessed by, our very own daddy. Please, hallelujah ministries, I know you are seated comfortably, but it is time to honor the man that God has honored. It is time to honor the man that God has laid his hands on. Hallelujah ministries, I present to you, Pastor of Lukau. It is uh, beautiful to be here in the presence of God. Woo! We celebrate God. Wherever you are in your homes, I welcome you with the peace of God. Shalom unto you. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your heart in him. This is our sign of victory. You win. They lose. Greater is he that is in you than he who is in this world. I am just filled with joy. I celebrate God for giving us time in this faithful Sunday to be together. If you were in church, I would have said, look at the person next to you, give somebody a high five. But where you are, if you are with family and if uh, you are comfortable with that, give somebody close to you a high five. Spouses, give each other a high five. Family, siblings, give each other a high five. We win. They lose. This is a victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is always with great joy that I seize the opportunity given to me by God to stand as an instrument, a tool to minister to you. I stand here not by myself. I stand by the grace of God. May God, who began this good work, bless you. It has been uh, now a few weeks uh, since uh, I have uh, traveled uh, to Europe and I am here speaking to you from uh, uh, Europe. I am in our studios in Europe. I believe that the Lord is uh, uh, doing great things. And wherever you are, I want you to know that we are one in spirit and one in heart. I'll be in and out of Johannesburg. And I believe that uh, not only in and out of Johannesburg, that God will give me the privilege and the opportunity to be where you are, be it in Singapore, in India, in uh, Indonesia, in uh, Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, you are in Canada, in America, you are just here in Europe, in many different places in Europe, you are in Italy, in Greece, you are in Portugal somewhere, you are in uh, Spain, you are uh, in Ireland, in Sc Scotland, you are in uh, uh, the United Kingdom, you are in Holland, you are in Belgium, you are in France. I will be with you by the grace of God right there in Germany. You are even in Russia. The Lord, I pray, may allow us the privilege of physically being together. Africa, we are one in God. The Lord who began this good work, he will finish it. I'm believing God to be with you in America and uh, in Canada. I want to be in the southern part of America. I want to go to, uh, to Brazil. I want to go to Colombia. I want to be, I want to be with all of you out there. Jamaica, I love you. May the Lord uh, God bless you. A.T. God bless you. May God who began this good work fulfill it. We are standing here with our hands lifted to say thank you to the king of glory, to the Lord of lords, to the most high God. He is God all by himself. You must hear Alf Lukau speak about his God. Alf Lukau believes that his God is all that. Yes, my God is all that. 
there is no one beside him. He is God all by himself. He is elevated above the circle of the earth. He says a word and it comes to pass. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the initiator. The Bible says that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. They call his name Elohim. In Hebrew, some say Elohim. He is the uncreated creator, the eternal self-existing God. Aren't you glad that you are a child of God? Aren't you glad that your name is in the list of the Lamb of God? That uh, one day, as the Lord allows, you will spend eternity with him. Mare Bezika, we bless God. Take a minute and just worship him and give him glory. Join with the angels in heaven who bow before him and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who has a knees and needs to come. Please, as you worship God and you come in a moment such as this, connect. It must not be time you are expecting to be entertained. No. This is time to encounter God through his word. His word is true and his word will come to pass. The world is fighting a lost battle. I say a lost battle because God will not allow the legacy of the spirit to go by in vain. The power of God will manifest even in greater glory than men and women who lived on earth previously had encountered. God will not allow the enemy to have the last word. Satan with all his acolytes are trying to knit in a plan, in their plan, uh, to get men to believe that God is a story of yesterday. That our God does not exist, or if he existed, is no longer the same God. He has grown weak. When we talk about God today is uh, literally with reference to history. God is locked in the box of yesterday. But now we are here to stand as authorized the month of God. Men and women anointed by God from across the globe. Speaking the voice of the spirit and arising in faith to demonstrate that uh, this word is true. I'm talking about the Bible, the unfailing word of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you do not have God, the enemy will pray on you. If you do not have God in you, you are literally a chicken in the backyard of Satan. He can get to you at please. That's why when you take an opportunity such as this, you do not uh, take it lightly. You do not just watch a man perform. No, this is the ministry of the spirit and God is doing something for you. In this moment, you must open yourself in the spiritual realm and understand that this is a spiritual time. God is spirit and those who connect or worship him should do so in spirit and in truth. May the glory of God reach you where you are in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the kingdom of God, those who are saved by God and called to the high calling of God. Understand that the power of God is reaching you where you are. It is not because you are not in a place with a big cross in front of you. Cross of wood or cross made of stone to remind you of what took place in Golgotha over 2,000 years ago that God is not with you. He say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I shall be with you every day till the end of time to where you are God is. Yes, right there as you are connecting, watching me. You're using different devices to connect to this broadcast. The Lord is here for you. He is the one who made this time possible. And because he made it possible, it is his purpose that will come to pass. I lift my hand and say, may the will of God be done 
in your life now in Jesus name God who made this uh, moment possible will bless you you're watching uh, on Facebook you are using uh, devices that you have uh, at your disposal to watch me connecting through YouTube the Lord will use any medium to reach you and bless you now as I stretch my hand in this moment may the glory and the power of God be yours in the name of Jesus you are watching me through AMI TV I greet you and I pray blessings over you with the blessings of God you are blessed you are blessed you are not cursed you are too blessed for the enemy to have his way on you in Jesus precious name hallelujah Lord, we give you glory. We thank you for giving us once again the opportunity to come together around your word in this moment of fellowship in the spirit. Lord, we believe that uh, you will have it your way. Spirit of the living God, I pray, may I be a simple vessel, an instrument, a tool in your hand. See through my eyes and hear through my ears and speak through my mouth today i pray that uh, it may be all about jesus christ i join john the baptist to pray saying i must decrease so it may increase lord let me decrease let off the cow with uh, all that makes him decrease and let jesus christ arise lord i pray to be an instrument what the guitar represent to a musician Position. May I be a guitar in your hand. As a speaker, I will use a microphone. Use me, oh God, to speak your will and your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God will bless you today through his word. He will bless you through his power. The question is, do you believe? I refuse to be just a speaker. Now, nah. I am here for an assignment to rescue those who are captive, those who have been taken by the enemy and locked in different prisons of life. I am here to be a tool of God, a vessel of God, to break the shackles of pain and let the prisoner go free. The yoke of the enemy shall be destroyed by the anointing. If you believe and your faith is aligned, this will be yours in the name of Jesus. The question is, do you believe? If you believe today will be the greatest day of your life, you will encounter God in his power and in his greatness. You will arise among men and testify and say, look what the Lord has done. He turned my morning into dancing. I was lost and now I am found. This will be your story if you believe. Jesus Christ said, did I not tell you that if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. I was sitting with uh, a man, and I say this with uh, humility. The purpose of saying this is not that I may do some uh, 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 branding or, or name uh, uh, dropping. No, he's a head of state in his country. And I sat with him, we were talking, and after a while, we ask that everyone may uh, leave us alone. We remain together. And among the few things that I say to him is a man who loves God. I told him, with the love that you have with God and the love that you have for God, uh, rather, if you do not align with the spirit of God in the supernatural, in this season, in what he's doing, you will still fail. You will fail in your assignment because where you are is not an easy place. The enemy will throw all kind of stones at you. Now, as a head of state, if you have to win, you will need more than uh, remembering some verses or singing some hymns. No, you will have to align spiritually because you see the strength of Christianity is not in the songs that we sing. It is in our spiritual alignment. Mm. I say again, somebody needs to hear this. The strength of Christianity is not in the song that we sing. It is in our spiritual alignment. If a child of God is a child of God because of his belonging to a certain local church and denomination, such a child of God will have no power. 
Have you not come across the children of God who speak well Jesus and they know the name of Jesus Christ, the name of God in different languages, even in the ancient languages such as Hebrew, the Hebrew of yesterday or the Greek of yesterday, but yet are living a life of defeat. What makes a child of God strong is not because you go to a certain church and you are part of a certain group, you believe in a certain dogmas. No, your alignment in the spiritual realm is your make or break. If you will stand amidst the, the turbulences of the enemy, the winds that is blowing in our generation, sickness and disease, economical difficulties, it will not be because you are a so-called good man. You, you don't drink, you, you, you mind your own business, you try to be a, a, a good girl, a good boy. Hear me, good boys and good girls do not make it. Those who make it are those who align with God. You must align. So I spoke to this great man. I have reverence for him. And my, 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 the purpose of my speaking was to bring him to understand and encourage him on this stand. That he must be more than just a, a talking Christian. Oh, well, uh, I am not of the other religion. I am a Christian. It must be more. If he really want to have victory... His victory is in God and it requires his spiritual alignment. If children of God today will win, they will not win because they dress in white, they have long robes, they have different Bibles and other people out there. It will be because spiritually they align correctly. And what is to align correctly? To align correctly is to align with uh, the word of God and with what the spirit of God is saying. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want to bring you to understand that your victory is in God. Your deliverance is in God. Your breakthrough is in God. If you will have your head up, it will be because of your God. God be for you. Who can be against you? It is not about anybody else. Oh, well, you came from a good family and your family loves you. That is not what will give you victory. Oh, well, your grandfather was a good man and gave you a good name. That is still not enough to give you victory. You have memorized some good chapters of the scriptures in the Bible. But still, that is not enough to give you victory. Because your spiritual alignment goes beyond you. Having a great memory to uh, still keep in your uh, system some good verses. No, oh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This should not just be some talking uh, 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 things that you have remembered, some words that you have remembered. It must become a personal relationship. You must not say the Lord is my shepherd because you know the psalm. But you should rather say the Lord is my shepherd because you know the shepherd. You know him as the shepherd. You talk about somebody you know. When winds and waves will come and sickness will come and knock your door, you will arise and say, by his traps I am healed because of your spiritual alignment. The church of God today is not just a cultural body. We are not an organization. We are a spiritual organism, a living entity. You child of God, wherever you are, in whatever thing you do or you find yourself doing in the spheres of men, please understand this. You are a spirit being more than you are a physical one. Your body and what you see on the outside is the lowest form of your existence. And if you have to have victory in this realm, your man inside, the spirit man, must arise and align with God. If that will be so, victory will be your portion. My name is Aflukau. I speak on 
behalf and in the name of Jehovah God, the maker of everything that exists in the visible and in the visible. He is Yahweh. I'm failing in his word and in his ways. The Bible says he's faithful. Even when men are unfaithful, he is God. He does not deviate on what he said to do. He is the creator and is blessing you as I stand today as a vessel. Hallelujah ministries, sons and daughters of Africa, those of you who have received Jesus Christ from around the world, may you receive the grace of God. Now in Jesus' name, may God glorify his name by causing you to arise. May God make his face shine upon you. May you win, may you arise in victory. In the name of Jesus, today I refuse defeat in your life. Did you hear me? I say I refuse defeat in your life. I speak victory, victory, victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I gave you the story, or I told you the story of uh, my conversation with uh, this uh, great man, uh, head of state. He's still the head of state, and I believe that uh, he will be head of state even in the next mandate because he's uh, so well aligned. Victory is a set in his life. He is the chosen of God for that country, a great nation in Africa. The reason why I told you about my conversation with him is to get you to a place where you understand spirituality is greater than just being called a churchgoer. If you have to have victory as a child of God, you will have victory because of your spiritual alignment. We are spiritual people. That's why the enemy cannot mess up with us. Our kind cannot fall. You are of a different breed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are not a commoner. Oh, well, every wind that blows gets you. No. What the enemy meant for evil, God will make for your good. Now, I am speaking to you in the name of Jesus. I'm standing on the scriptures, on the word of God, in the perfect will of our Lord and Savior. He wants you to know that he gave you victory. Over 2,000 years ago, on the cross of Calvary, when Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, died, you are to win in every battle. Victory is your portion. You are a good friend to have, but a wrong adversary. Because I see in you an adversary that does not lose a battle. No matter what the enemy may do, a thousand may fall on your side. Ten thousand on your right side. It will not come near you. With your eyes only, you shall see the reward of the wicked. Which type of a man are you? You are a saved man. You are a man chosen by God. The creator. I am that I am. You are not a commoner. You are invincible in God. As I am speaking right now, the Lord is causing every broom flying witch that has launched an attack spiritually against you, against your finances, against your well-being, against stability in your life to fall in the name of Jesus. It has to be known once again that we serve the most high God, that our God is not a man, he does not lie. Our God is not weak, he is strong and mighty. It has to be known once again in this generation that it is true that those who look to him are radiant. Their faces will never be covered with shame. We are not ordinary people. We do not fall like a mere man. Hear me, you are a dangerous fellow because of your God. Those who will dare you will fall. Again, I keep on saying this and I want to say it one more time. If only you knew the reason and what it took for you to be here today, you will praise God waving to him, the halal of God. You will give God the tehillah, your sacrifice of praise. If only you understood what they had planned against you, you will know that you are not a man to be messed up with. Some of us 
are the reason why the devil has no peace. The greatest nightmare Satan has, Africa. I tell you, broom flyers cannot fly. The enemy keeps on changing teams, but yet we have victory. Those who are born in God overcomes the world. This is the word of God. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You are born of God. You are an overcomer. COVID-19 is not your portion. Sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, low blood pressure. They are not your portion. Cancer. Cancer in the blood, leukemia, brain tumor, breast cancer, colon cancer. Whatever cancer it is, is not your portion in Jesus' name. You are born to win. And on the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ paid the price for your liberty, your healing in full. The Bible says, by straps you are healed. This day I pray healing and deliverance over you. I pray the blessings of God over you. Your faith will be honored today. The promises of God made in your life will come to pass in the name of Jesus. You see, David had faith. He stood in the battlefield. On one side, Israel, and on the other side, the Philistine. In the eyes of men, the Philistine had an upper hand on Israel. They had from their rank one that was known as a champion. The champion of God, they called him. Now, you are not a champion because you are tall. You are a champion because you competed and came out the victor. He was the champion because he was able to terrify everybody. He stood and he was the pain Israel had in that moment. He defiled Israel, challenged them, and spoke against the God. And no one in Israel could dare stand against him until this young anointed boy who believed in God, who understood that it's not by might nor by power, it is by my spirit, says the Lord, came to the party. The Bible says, he asked, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he may defile the armies of the Lord. This young man was so bold. He was so, so bold. Because he knew his God. Do you know who is your God? Once you know your God, you will not be shaken by what shakes men out there. I am building you in faith and calling you to keep your eyes on God. No matter what happens and what comes your way. The Lord who is with you, he will not leave you. David stood bold, he said to the Philistine, the one called the champion of God. Though himself, as young, he was not even qualified to make it in the ranks of his own army, the armies of Israel. But he stood against him and said, you come against me with the javelin, with the spear, with uh, the, the, the shield. But I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel that you have defiled. He said, you came against me or you come against me. And he said, I also come against you. Don't retreat. Stand strong be undeterred there must be some form of resilience in you against this disease against this sickness against poverty that is knocking your door you must stand and speak back and speak the word of god he said today david speaking to goliath i will cut off your head a new victory is already his because when you know who you are and whose you are you know one thing, you don't fight to have victory, you fight in victory. May you see the victory of the Lord in your life. May every enemy of your success fall today in Jesus' name. May the victory of God be so evident that every eye around you will notice that the God's hand is at work in your life. When everyone is going down, May you mount up wings like an eagle 
I am speaking to you. And I am speaking the word of God. So shall it be. It cannot be otherwise. May you keep on rising and going higher and higher and higher. In the name of Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. The old world will see that God's hand is at work through you. You will multiply. You will expand. You will get new territories in the name of Jesus. And this is a key. Family, remain in faith and refuse to be distracted. Oh, I've come across men and women of God who are so involved in so many things out there that you ask yourself, do they have time to pray? And when they are spending time praying, do they really co co connect with God? You are involved in too much. You know too much about everybody. You have made it your business to help Satan in his quest of attacking whatever is godly. You, you want to understand who's doing what, protecting this. Hey, let go so God may take hold. You, 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 you checking your back. You are afraid of this and that. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want the Lord will provide for you. Be at peace. You are worrying too much. What will be tomorrow? How will I be? With everything that is on your shoulders, when you go on your knees, you can't hear God. Some of you understand more about COVID-19 than you understand about anything in the scriptures. You understand COVID-19 better than you understand John 3.16. You know everything about COVID. So much so that the only vision you see is all those uh, 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 virus uh, designed in red. And you see, you see them in blue and in purples. And when you pray, those are the vision you have. You are a COVID-minded Christian. <laughs> COVID-minded. When you lift your hand, Rika, COVID, 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 COVID. He, COVID will not help you. COVID is defeated. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ is better than any treatment. Jesus Christ by his blood paid the price for you. Vaccine or no vaccine, healing is your portion. You see, when you are set for victory, there are things that you must let go of. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not want to know anything except Christ and him crucified. Oh, well, you know, you must check who is next to you and you must be very careful because you see they're doing this, the attack. Let the devil be the devil. Satan is Satan. If he does not attack and do what the Bible revealed that uh, is uh, his purpose or his uh, mission, what else do you think that he will do? Become an Uber driver? He's not an Uber driver. The Bible said the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus spoke also and said, I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Men and women around you will see you go through battles, but they will never see you defeated. They will see people come and people go. They will see winds way, uh, come, your way, waves come and toss your boat, but they will never see you defeated. I have been through many things in my little life to tell you that this is verified. When all this is over, you will be the last man standing. They will come against you by one way. They shall be scattered in seven different ways. This is your portion, your heritage in God. Do you just know who you are? Do you just know your spiritual state? Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm just me. No, you are more than that. The outside you is the lowest form of your existence. Arise and be who you are called to be spiritually. And you see the glory of God. We are in a very interesting time. This is the moment where God wants to manifest the supernatural in a way that mankind have never ever seen before.
Those who came before us, even those who are recorded in the scriptures, had wished to see what God is about to manifest. You and I are privileged to be right there in the season of the Holy Ghost, the season of the supernatural. Satan is mad. The devil and all the acolyte are going all out. Satan does not want you to embrace what God has done and set for you. The devil wants you to miscarry the pregnancy in the spiritual realm to others. He's pushing them to an abortion. You were really where God wanted you to be. But wind started blowing. Satan began to speak and his voice started getting louder and louder. You aborted the mission. This is what the enemy wants. Because Satan understands that uh, the world is about to see the glory of God and the power of God in the way we have not seen. So he has to discredit the source and discourage those who are supposed to be men and women who will carry the flames of fire. Refuse to fall in the wicked plan of the enemy. And refuse, if you have been invited in the plans of Satan, refuse to fall in the wickedness that the enemy is orchestrating against men and women, families out there. Wickedness does not pay. Those who are operating in wickedness and those who are passengers in the train of wickedness, hear me, wickedness does not pay. When you align yourself to be an instrument in the hand of the devil, you will fall. It has always been like this. It has always been like this. If history is something to go about, look around. The fate of the wicked is one, judgment. Allow the light of God to shine once again in you that the world may see through you the glory of God. Healing, deliverance, breakthrough, prosperity, power is in God. We stand to see the glory of God. I am one of the many who have to thank God daily on their knees and say, Lord, I don't deserve. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Some of us should not even say, Lord, please do, because he has done too much. We have seen far beyond our expectations. I see the glory of God, the miracle power of God in operation. I see men and women being healed, delivered, set free. Miracles of all kinds taking place because Jesus Christ is the same indeed and is working in the church. When you hear the glory of God out there manifested through one or two people out there, please do not be of those who are skeptical and throw dust or dirt on who God is using. Please don't. You see, it is a dangerous move to discredit the glory of God and attribute it to the enemy. God is healing people and you say no. It cannot be God. It is the devil. It is witchcraft. It is some Beelzebub spirit that is operating. Or it is tricked. It just means that your heart is so hard that you rather believe the hand of man is behind the power of God than to attribute what is manifested to God himself. It just means that you are so lost, completely lost. You, you are just disappeared, vanished, if you would believe that the devil is operating where God is operating. It is as one who's saying that, uh, well, the devil is stronger than God. Today, I speak blessings, the blessings of God over you. I want to release the power of God, but I want to read one scripture with you. I say one scripture, we'll read literally uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, if the Lord allows us 19. But I will pull all this as uh, 
uh, compressed as possible to throw it as a seed in you. And by the grace of God, the Lord will give us time to break this scripture that I bring to you today, to break it, dissect it better in another occasion. I want you to read with me from the first book of Corinthians chapter 15. First book of Corinthians 15, verse 12 to 19. I am speaking here of Paul. Paul making an argument and the argument of Paul is that there is life after life. If you understand what he was really up to, he wanted to make a simple statement that he believes that in the spiritual, there is the supernatural. I'll say his argument was simply that the supernatural is a reality. He believed that beyond what eyes can see, there are things that are bigger that eyes cannot see. He's making the argument because the church was divided. He here, I say the church, but it is literally in the context of uh, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and so forth. The Sadducees believed that uh, there was no life after this uh, natural life. Everything will end up here. It will finish here. While the Pharisees, on the other hand, believed that after this life, there was life. So Paul, who was aligned with the Pharisees, not only in flesh, but especially in the spirit. The Pharisees, we know, are religious people. And it was literally like a political religious party of yesterday. I am not here making the point of the, the doctrines and the weaknesses and so forth. There was a time that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all those guys had played a great role. If God allows us uh, next time, we will break it down. From Malachi to John the Baptist, the church or the people of Israel had gone through what is known as a time of silence where God did not speak. For over 400 years, no prophet spoke on behalf of God. So that moment, that space of time, good men came together in their formation, be it Pharisees and so forth, and they played the role of teaching Israel to remain in the principles or the precept taught by the law of Moses. The unfortunate part is they spoke of things without revelation. But I hear, I want to remain in the scripture and read it. I believe that even just hearing the reading of the scripture, your spirit will receive something and your life will never be the same. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 19, the Bible says, Now if Christ is preached that he has been risen or raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, you see, there has been contradiction in the time of Paul amongst those who preached. This is what we see today, people preaching things that they do not have a clue about. In the time of Paul, though he was preaching Christ, there are many people who spoke Christ but differently. They had a sour anointing. Be careful of anyone who will tell you anything that sounds like the gospel and is not? How would you know that it sounds like it but is not? He may tell you the name of Christ, even try to open the Bible here and there, but you do not see the word. The word uplifts Christ. The word brings men to repentance. The word draws men to God. The word builds men in the kingdom of God. The word, I'm talking about the word of God, promotes unity, promotes love, promotes forgiveness, pulls the glory of God and brings it on earth. The word of God shows that God is great. Whatever undermines God directly or indirectly is not the word of God. So he say, now if Christ is preached that he has been risen or raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Some people are saying that there is no resurrection of the dead. So now he's confronting that. He's saying, how is it that some of you are talking literally nonsense? Verse 13, he said, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If they have a true 
point and what they're saying has some sense in it. It means that the Christ did not rise from the dead. You see, many of us embrace things because it is uh, dramatic and uh, it is interesting entertaining. Someone tells you, no, the healing power of God is uh, in many ways. It's not true. It is all those pastors. When you look around, they tell you, oh, no, all of them are the same. They're trying to tell you that God is not able to do what you hear that uh, he's doing out there. Because none of them is able to do more. Whoever is attacking the power of God cannot be a, an instrument of the same, an instrument of the power of God. Those who are speaking and speaking against the prophetic power of God cannot flow in the prophetic. So here he's saying, let's say that these guys have a point, meaning that uh, what they're saying is true. It simply means that Christ did not rise from the dead. Verse 14, he said, and if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Children of God, believers, please, you have to have a bigger view, a panoramic view of what is happening. You must question yourself and ask yourself if I accept that all these that I had believed that the power of God displayed through the servant of God and so forth was all an hallucination or a lie. What am I saying? Am I saying that God does not operate? Oh, well, I know that the enemy may uh, whisper in your nose, you're not saying that. You believe that God operates. Then ask yourself, where? Because everyone who's standing for God is being uh, painted dark. Who is he that uh, has been accepted as a servant of God? Learn to think. And here Paul is leading them to think. He said, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then it means that the cross is not risen. Verse 14, he said, and if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. If our preaching is empty, it also means that your faith is empty. Your God cannot be painted weak and you applaud for it. There are implications in believing that God is not the one behind that miracle. There are implications that you have to take account to. Just believing that lead to the doctrine of your faith. If God does not heal the sick, if God does not uh, uh, um, operate miracles, if it's not God, if it is uh, all man, or it is uh, some diabolical spirit and power, where is God on earth? Where is his glory? What makes you a Christian? I read and I carry on. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. This is verse 17. You are still in your sins. Those he was speaking to did not see it that way. They just thought that, oh, well, it is all about here. Christ is not risen. But they did not see far. Their views were really shortened. There are people who cannot see farer than the end of the nose. So he's trying to paint a bigger picture to, get, to give them a bird view of what they may be saying without understanding. Do you know that many people are cursing Christ not knowing that they're cursing Christ? There are men and women who are fighting God thinking that they're fighting men. Some people put it upon or took it upon themselves to do certain things in the kingdom of God, thinking just like Saul, that they are rendering a service to God, not knowing that they are hurting the body of Christ. Beloved, do not be of those who will close up to the power of God. This is a supernatural time, and God supernaturally is reaching men and women. His power is being displayed and demonstrated. Verse 18, he said, Then... Also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. He said, those who have fallen asleep, meaning that are those who died in the physical, if there is no resurrection of the dead, if the supernatural does not exist, if everything stops here, if there is nothing greater than singing hymns, then it means that they have perished. 
So if they perish, it carry on and sin. And if uh, this life only have, we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. Pitiable here, he said, the people that should be pitied the most. It means that all this world believing that there is a God in heaven, there is no God. We have invested our lives in believing in that and it was a lie. What was he saying here? Paul here is not in any way whatsoever trying to join the, uh, the voice of those who had spoken against God. No. Paul here is not trying to make sense or embrace the fact that uh, it is true what they said. No, he knows it's not true. But he's painting the picture of what people had believed through the preaching of those who said the supernatural doesn't exist. There is no life after life. Everything stops here. Church is about going to get some uh, encouraging word about your marriage, about your family, about your work, and that's all. God does not manifest his glory anymore. So he's saying to them, there are implications in believing in this way. If you believe in this way, what you are really saying is that there is no God. And that those who have been worshiping God are doing so in a lie. They are deceived. God is operating miracles. And his glory is for you and for me today. Church of God, align yourself in God. Put yourself together to believe that he uh, is the great physician. He heals again. What medical doctors cannot do for you, what medicine and science cannot do for you, he will do for you. I need you to believe again that God is able to make a way where there seems to be no way. What is deemed to be impossible with man is still possible with God. I want to pray for you and I pray that God may, may turn things around. Supernaturally, God is reaching you and is blessing you. Will you begin to pray with me? And I want you to pray trusting God, aligning yourself spiritually that the word of God will come to pass. Rokota, Rebesete, Lord, we thank you. I believe you, Lord. I trust you. I am trusting you for the miracle that you are releasing to manifest. Miracles in the lives of your sons and your daughters, wherever you are. Receive the grace of God and receive the blessings of God. May the supernatural power of God come your way. What you cannot see naturally, may God give it to you. What you cannot really earn through the effort of your labor, may the Lord give it to you. I speak prosperity over you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare the Lord is blessing you. You will live in houses you did not build. Prosperity is coming your way. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of the enemy is abolished, is destroyed in the name of Jesus. I am seeing God healing somebody. God is healing you because you are trusting him. In fact, you are saying, Lord, right now, I know you can do it. So I open myself. Do it for me, O King of glory. I pray, joining myself to your faith. Receive the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, I am seeing a woman, a white woman. You are in Douglas. Douglas, the Isle of Man. You are in Douglas in the Isle of Man. You are suffering of kidney problem. You have issues with your kidneys. I see a name, Janet Fessy. Janet Fessy, F-A-C-E-Y. Janet, your time to testify the healing of God has come. I'm speaking to you from literally this space given to me as a point of contact in Europe. And God is seeing you where you are in Douglas. Receive the healing power of God. Be healed in the name of Jesus. The glory of God is breaking the yoke of the enemy right now. Ladies and gentlemen, believe in God. Keep on praying. Speak to God. Speak to God. Mercy, mercy. I'm hearing mercy, mercy, wanjala, mercy, wanjala. That's your name, mercy, wanjala. You are trusting God that it will open doors. Life has been difficult. You lost your mother many years ago. You were still young. And since then, things have been literally tight.
Trouble after trouble. You live a life of struggle. You are in Nairobi, in Kenya, in Africa. The hand of God is reaching you. Receive the grace of God and receive the glory of God in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Your life will never be the same again, no matter what the devil does or tries. You are blessed today in Jesus' name. I release the grace of God over all of you sons and daughters of God, wherever you are. Receive the blessings of God. Receive the peace of God. The yokes of the enemy are destroyed in your lives. In every area of your life, I speak freedom in Jesus' name. Now I'm stretching my hands towards you. I want you to stretch yours toward me. And if in any way whatsoever possible, please attach the screen, the screen of your connection, and do so as a prophetic and spiritual act. I am blessing you and releasing the power of God. Right now, some of you are sensing the glory of God going through you in Jesus' name. Receive the blessings of God. Take it, it's yours in the name of Jesus. Take it. I bless you. I bless your family. I bless your ways. I bless whatever the Lord set for you. What God set for you, no devil can steal. In Jesus' name, I decree and I declare it is well with you. What was closed is open up now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, receive it is yours. I want to give somebody a great opportunity right now as we are all flowing in the supernatural power of God. You are listening to me, but you are not a child of God. You have not given your life to Jesus Christ. You have never taken a decision uh, to be serious with God, to really follow Jesus Christ. I give you this opportunity to invite him and make him the Lord and the Savior of your life. If this is your desire, I want you to pray with me this simple prayer. Make this prayer your prayer. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Today, I take a decision. I open myself to receive you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, come inside me. Change my life. Forgive my sins. Write my name in the book of the Lamb of God. I believe I am saved. For your word says so. Those who come to you will not be rejected. Thank you for accepting me. Say it again. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Say, Spirit of the living God, Holy Spirit, take my life and lead me more and more to Christ. Help me live a righteous life. Say, Satan, I belong to Jesus now. I command you, stay away from me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you pray this simple prayer, believe that uh, your name is written in the book of the Lamb of God, you child of God. I release the blessings of God over you, and I pray that God will begin this good work, may fulfill it in Jesus' name. God is doing great things. Many are testifying. You will keep on testifying. Hear me. One may be wondering what will be of uh, the move of testimonies after this month is completely gone as we embracing a new month the month of september the ninth month a woman carries pregnancy for nine months after that whatever was inside manifest what will be our testimony hear me god wants you to keep on testifying testimonies that are flowing through you will keep on flowing and you should always Shout praise unto God by testifying. I am seeing many things happening. We'll be giving you great programs. We'll just now be meeting for a moment of the demonstration of the power that I am calling high voltage power. I will announce to you as the Lord allows us this coming week what God has in store for you and for me. We'll have a Zoom type of meetings or team, whatever the case may be, where we'll allow thousands of us to, to join me for a healing school moment. I am literally throwing salt so you may understand something good is coming. God is not true with you. We will see the glory of God together. May the blessings of God be your portion in the name of